you jump to your feet. We've got a God to worship this morning. Isn't that cool? God is here in this place already before us. And we get an opportunity to stand in His presence and worship Him this morning. So we're just going to do that together. idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and joy are in his place. How good is that? Do you know where God's people meet, there needs to be strength and there needs to be joy. So let's start to stir up joy in ourselves. Let's start to say, God, where you are, I want to be. Come on, let's start to lift our voices to God. Where you are, I want to be. And where you are, there is joy in this place. There is joy in this place. So Lord, we just pray a a supernatural um, outpouring of joy over this church now in the name of Jesus. 
we pray, God, that, that you would just build us, Lord. You would build joy in our hearts because you're the God who made the heavens. You're the God who made the heavens and the earth. It's so good to be here this morning, isn't it? It's so good to be with God's people. Let's, let's worship him together. Come on, let's worship him. experience that yet, who don't know the love of God yet, who have living in ignorance of God's goodness to them and how much he's given them. So let's now, we're going to sing that song again. We're going to sing that song again. This time we're going to be making it a prayer for someone else. So just change your heart attitude to say, let, let about celebrating what God's done for me. And now, God, would you do this for my friend? For that person whose name you've just popped into my head, for that person whose face has just appeared in my head. And if you haven't got somebody, just somebody out there. Doesn't matter who, somebody who doesn't know God. So let's go through this again. This time it's a prayer for someone else.
one day in anticipation of those people coming into the kingdom of God and standing before Jesus, repenting of their sins and just worshipping him. Let's praise him. so much, so much that you would send your only son, that you would send Jesus and that you would send him before we were scrubbed up and tidy. You would send him while we were still sinners to die, to, to, to pay the price of our rubbish so that we can come and be your family, so that we can come and be your children. Lord, we want to thank you and give you praise and give you glory. Oh, Lord, you are so good. You are so good to us. We just thank you and worship you. We thank you and worship you. We're going to take communion together now. That just seems like such an appropriate moment to do that. So, you know, you can you can um, take your seats and Jason's going to come lead us. And God, we just want to thank you for what you've done for us. Amen. Good morning, everybody. How good was that? How much fun was that? Jeez, for all you guys jumping up and down, you just really bleh. How fun was that? Yeah, it was all right. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, cool. Well, going on from what Joella said, you know, thinking about different perspectives and different point of views, well, just bear with me. I'm going to go on a, on a bit of a story. So last week, my little family got sick. That's where you go, ah. It was Ollie's first cold. Ah. And who's got kids? Whether it be, you know, human kids or fur baby kids. <laughs> you know, how helpless do you feel? Like, you look at him and he's coughing his little guts up and there's snot in there, he can't breathe. I'm pointing over there and he's over here. But you go, you know, like, I can't do anything for him. He's got to go through this and, and go and suffer through it. Well, who also knows that in the little family community, except the little animal kids, when, when the kids get sick, generally everybody else gets sick too, yeah? Well, then Emma got sick, and then I got sick. Aww. 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 But, you know, we can take stuff, we can, we can get over it, and we get over it pretty quickly. Well, that's all right. And then mum rings me up and goes, oh, I'm sick too. 
<laughs> All right, well, here, take my flu bomb concoction. It's, um, I'll tell you about it later. It tastes disgusting, but it works. And I uh, saw her yesterday, and she went, oh, I'm still sick. Have you tried my flu bomb recipe? No, nah, I bought the ingredients, but I can't bring myself to do it. <laughs> it's like, here's part of your solution. You know, it's packed full of vitamin C and other cold-fighting stuff, but you choose not to take it. Like, it's right there in front of you, but you choose not to take it. So, in the words from the castle, suffering your jocks. But, <laughs> yeah. So, there's the solution, but she's not willing to take it. And you still feel bad, because you go, well, here it is. Just take it, and you'll be better. Well, I've got a question for you. You as parents know what it's like to see other people suffer. How do you think God felt when he saw Jesus on the cross? You know, like our heart breaks for our kids. How do you think God felt? He's written how Jesus felt. He's like, please take it away from me. We don't know how God felt, but I'm presuming he'd feel pretty damn awful. Yeah, it's something like that. You know... Jesus died for us to take our place and to be washed clean. Whether we choose to or not, he did that. How much did God love the world? Well, we sung it, and Joella said it earlier. John 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the, the world so much that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. But here's the best bit. God sent his son into the world not to judge the world but to save the world through him Jesus went through that suffering for us and here's the thing do you choose to accept that the solution is Jesus not the flu bomb it's Jesus are you going to choose that because he died for us he died for us come on all stand with me please Lord, I want to thank you that, that you did die for us because none of us deserve, none of us deserve it, but you died for us anyway. You took away our sins. So, Lord, as we take our, as we take our wafer or our bread, let us just think about you and that sacrifice and thank you that you died for our sins so we can have eternal life with you. <coughs> Father, thank you for the blood that was spilt and that your blood has washed us clean. As we take the juice, let's just remember that sacrifice. Amen. Thanks so much, Jace. That is so good, isn't it? God offers that uh, sacrifice for us, but it's up to us whether we accept and take it or not. Uh, please, you can uh, take your seats, and uh, I'm going to invite Daryl and Claire Wilch to come up. Uh, Daryl is our Daryl and Claire, are our youth leaders in this church, and they run Friday Night Youth. They do a fantastic job, and they're just coming now to uh, give an update on what's happening, and we're going to hear some of the great things that are happening at youth. So, let, yeah, come on, let's welcome Daryl. How are we doing? Only good. Only good. Yeah, you know, when you get to my age and you're upright and you're breathing, Oregon's fantastic. <laughs> Oregon's absolutely fantastic. Okay, youth, we're off for the holidays. June, th ju sorry, June, that's gone, nearly. July 30, we're back on a Friday night. Um, this term is going to be a bit unexciting. We're not going to throw anyone off a cliff or chuck anyone under a go-kart or anything like that. But in the school holidays, October 5th to 8th, 8th we're going to head to Adelaide for four days and we're going to go to the Out of Nowhere Conference at the Influencers Church in Adelaide. It's run by Youth Alive Australia and it's going to be just aimed at teenagers. I think Harry said it last time when we came back from Bendigo 
hey, this was our music and they spoke in our language. And that's what the influence is going to be. That's what this out of nowhere is going to be. It's going to be spoken in teenagers' language. They're going to talk about stuff that I've never heard of because they talk about Minecraft games and all that sort of stuff. You know, and they mix it into a sermon. I wouldn't know one end of Minecraft from the other. I know the kids play it and that's about it. But, you know, they understand that. And that's just going to be fantastic. Uh, we're going to be staying at Torrens Valley Christian School, which is a school that's affiliated with Rivergum. And so um, it's going to be all safe and everything for your children. And I think Claire's going to be looking after the catering for it. So you're not going to starve or get food poisoning or anything like that. Well, we will be praying against that anyway. <laughs> okay, so can I have Claire and Emily Menage, please, come up. Good morning, church. This is the other half of youth group. <laughs> <laughs> the sidekick, I call myself. Anyway, um, Emily's um, come this morning because we were meant to have the River Gun Band, but they were a bit sick. So I've got a few questions to ask Emily in relation to youth group. So my first one, and I hope you've got your answers primed. Um, I did a few days ago. <laughs> May have forgotten. So she's a teenager, she's forgotten. Okay, all right. Emily, what do you love about youth group? I'm going to be honest, it's the social aspect for me. <laughs> the social aspect. <laughs> like, yeah, it's such a great bunch of kids to be around every Friday night. Yep, and yeah. I have most of them Monday to Friday, <laughs> 9 till 3, and it's still a lot of fun. And what is a highlight, an individual event? The first question. That would have to be History Makers, history without makers. a doubt. Yeah, yep. that I think was a lot epic. of people impacted by that. I'm desperately yeah. upset that we couldn't go last year or this year. And what about a highlight for something that happens each week? Mr. Wilkes' mm. boring talk. No, I, w I was actually going to say, it would be like when we all just sit down and have our little snack and hear Mr. Wilsh. Like, I get something every week out of his little talks. And, yeah, he just says them cl so clear and simple, like, just so we all understand it. That is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he always says, I say to him, he's missed his vocation. Should have been a preacher, but hey, <laughs> another story. All right, thank you, Emily. And we look forward to youth group starting again at the end of July. Isn't that good? Isn't that good? Hey, Claire, can you come back here for a sec? <laughs> hey, um, I just think it's really great if we take the opportunity right now to pray for what happens on Friday night. Yeah. Uh, let's, so you can either stand where you are or you can sit, but let's extend your hands towards these guys. And let's, if you've got some of the young people who are part of youth, uh, just extend your hand towards them as well. And let's pray God's blessing continued blessing on what happens there. Should we do that together? Let's lift our voices together and let's start to pray. Lord Jesus, we want to thank you so much uh, for our Friday night youth. We want to thank you, God, for the way Daryl and Claire are growing these young people up, uh, not, not just to connect together, but to actually become disciples of Christ. So we thank you for the great, fun, safe aspect that is there on Friday nights. And we pray for each young person, Lord, who is involved and each young person who is going to be involved in the second half of this year. And we pray, Lord, that each of them will meet you and will grow up to know you and love you and to serve you. So, Lord, we ask your blessing on Friday night. We ask for uh, your blessing on the upcoming History Makers Conference, God. We, we pray that many will be added to your kingdom, Lord. Uh, in that time, and we just pray now for continued fruit and continued prosperity of our youth group in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. 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 Come on, let's, let's thank these guys for what they do. Good stuff. Okay, take your seats if you've stood it, uh, except for Amanda, because Amanda's about to come. Uh, come on up, Amanda. So, P for people who don't know Amanda, she's been part of our church for a couple of months. She came from Adelaide up for a position with our church, uh, rolling out what we're calling our youth, our kids outreach program. Uh, so Amanda's now got a great update on what she's been doing over the last couple of months and where we're heading forward. So can you welcome Amanda and she's going to talk to us. Good morning, church. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Joella. Um, yeah, great to be here. So I just thought I'd give a quick update. Ah, sorry. 
Um, good one, Barney. So our kids outreach program now has a name and it's called Kids Club, which is really awesome. And the planning stages have been incredible because through planning is vision. And what's been great about the vision is being able to see potential in what's gonna happen with this program. And what I love is the dreaming of connecting and reaching community, the chance to connect with families, yeah. um, meet needs, to kind of fill a gap right there where people may be struggling, where there could be you know, a lack of security in their life in general. Uh, how many people here have had problems in their lives? Yeah, and I'm assuming everybody. And how many people here recognise the importance of a safe space or how valuable safe people are yeah, yeah. and how impactful that can be on your life? And I just, I felt so encouraged last night when I was thinking about this, that this program offers so many things to young people. Um, it offers a chance to really plant seeds in young people's minds for God. Uh, seeds of truth, seeds of righteousness, seeds of love, seeds of grace. Things that have been poured into our lives, we pour out into the next generation. It provides a place for families to come and find a safe space. Smiling faces, somewhere comfortable they can come and be a part of, and wherever else that leads. So this is the vision. It's a program that we're looking to start on Wednesday evenings at this stage after school for maybe an hour and 45 minutes. We get together, we do a few things with these young people, but the potential is really, really great. And it's amazing. And you know, as Dave said, I've come from Adelaide two months ago and I've seen a whole bunch of new faces, new church, new culture, but it's the same purpose. Yeah. It's the same kingdom. It's the same reason why we are all here. And I was listening to something this morning that said, wouldn't you want to do all you could do with God, with your time on earth? Would you want to waste that? Would you want to live comfortably? Would you want to do all that you could do for God with your time on this earth? Yeah, yeah. So I wanted to encourage everybody today with that and just ask for volunteers. Um, I need people that can help in the capacity of setting up, cleaning up, uh, kids' activities. If you can just come alongside young people, uh, do some craft activities, do some fun things. There, there, there's a few um, areas where I really need some volunteers. So if this has touched you and if this has spoken to you, can I please invite you? There is a piece of paper at the front desk there on a clipboard where I've just done this really, really awesome kids club design. It's really terrible, in fact, because I can't draw. But um, put your name, put your number down so I can contact you through the week. Or if you want to have a chat, if you want to try and catch me after the service, that's fine too. Um, apologies if you don't get me though, because sometimes I run around and things. But there'll also be another clipboard in the cafe uh, where the coffee and stuff is. So just chuck your name, your number down and let's just get involved. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Amanda. Let's stay here. Let, let's pray for Amanda as well as the band comes and gets ready to lead us in worship again. Uh, but let's, let's pray for our outreach program. I mean, we're, we're praying for Amanda as leading it, but really let's pray for all of those children and young people in this community. There's a potential for them to meet Jesus. If that doesn't fire us up, I don't know what does. But if you want to stand, you can stand. Otherwise, just extend your hand and let's, let's pray together. Lord God, we want to thank you, firstly, for the gift that Amanda has been to our church. Uh, Lord, and we thank you for the vision to see young people in this community come to know you. So, Lord, we, we just lift this program to you now. And, Lord, uh, we're, we're actually praying, too, for the people of this room. Lord, the people of this church, that Lord, if there's a heart there, if there's a, if there's a, a niggling there to say, yeah, I want to be involved in seeing children and young people come to know Jesus, then Lord, I, I pray that you'll just actually make that itch unbearable. <laughs> you'll make that itch unbearable until they, until they say, yeah, I'm in, I'm in. So we pray for Amanda God as she leads. We pray that you will give her great wisdom. You'll give her great discernment. You'll increase her leadership capacity. And we pray, Lord, for each uh, child, each young person who is right now within, say, 100 metres, 100 metres of this building. Uh, there's a whole heap of them, God. And so we speak now into the heavenlies and we ask Holy Spirit, we ask angels that you will go and you will speak to each of those young people, each of those families, each of those children. They may be sitting in their homes right now playing Xbox. They may still be in bed. They may be just wandering around, not sure what their purpose is. Holy Spirit, speak to each of them now and draw them in by the power of your presence, I pray. 
Draw them in, we pray, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And Lord, as we continue to worship, we just pray now that you, Holy Spirit, would stir in us. Stir up the prophetic. Stir up words of knowledge, God. Stir up everything that, uh, that you want to bring this morning. Holy Spirit, we pray. Come on, let's, if you're not standing already, let's stand to our feet and say, Lord, speak through us. Speak through me. Speak through worship. Come and pour your presence out, Lord. Come and pour your presence out. Lord, we just step into your presence now. With our awareness, we just turn our attention to you and say thank you that you're here. And we're just here ready to listen, ready to hear, ready to experience everything you've got for us this morning. And God, we thank you. We thank you for what you've given us.
You are so good to us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Who knows that sometimes it's when you're just in silence, when you're just in quietness, when you actually stop talking, that it's when you hear God. Let's just take a moment to wait on Him.
are the one who makes a way for us. We thank you that you are the one who, who causes miracles to happen. You're the one who, who brings light in the darkness. And you're the one who always keeps your promises. You are the reliable one. You are the rock we stand on. When everything else falls away, you are all that will remain. And you are good. You are good. So we thank you that you are good. We thank you that you are for us. We thank you that you are the way maker, the miracle worker, the light in the darkness, the promise keeper. And thank you, God, that it is all wrapped up, it is all encapsulated in Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, our saviour, our redeemer and our judge, the one who is love. Can we just praise our God together? Can we just praise our God together and say, thank you God for who you are. Thank you, God, that you are good. Thank you that you are the way maker, the miracle worker, the promise keeper, the light in the darkness. That's who you are, God. That's who you are, God. Come on, let's lift our praise to God. That's who you are, God. I wonder if you'll be brave with me for just a minute and if you'll put your hand on your heart and you'll pray with me and you'll, you'll pray this prayer. God, whatever you want to do in me, have your way. Are you brave enough to pray that prayer? Lord, whatever you want to do in me, whatever you have to do in me, have your way. Because you are the way maker. Continue to take us on with you, we pray. Continue to take us on with you, we pray. Yes, Lord. So whatever you want to do in us, we pray that you do it now in Jesus' name. take your seats, why don't you turn to the person next to you and say, God is the way maker. He makes miracles. He keeps his promises. He's the light in the darkness. That is who you are. Hey, can we thank our, our band for what they brought for us this morning. 
You know, these guys had to step in at short notice after the River Gum Band sadly had to pull out because there was a lot going on there, but uh, they had to step in at quite short notice. So uh, thank you so much, guys, for your continued service to us. You are really good. You are really good. Yeah, so we're going to start our new series. So if you want to grab your Bible, um, you can do that. If you didn't bring a Bible with you, you can open the app on your phone. If you don't have the app on your phone, just open your app store or whatever and go to version and download that right now. It'll be the best download you ever made. Uh, it's far better than Flappy Bird, I tell you. It's even better than Zero, isn't it, Chris? Best app ever. So um, get your Bible out and we'll, um, we'll, we'll start to get into this new series, which we're calling Generous. Generous. So think Toys R Us, but it's Generous. And it's all about living well in a self-focused world. We're looking at how God... Um, wants us to view the things that we have. So the questions are things like, you know, how should our faith impact on our money? How should our faith impact on our possessions? Is this world really more self-focused than it was in the past? What are, what are God's priorities for my physical belongings, the things that I own? And why is generosity important anyway? Here's the good one. Doesn't the church just want my money? Yeah, absolutely. No, but doesn't the church just want your money? And then, of course, we're going to look at what does Jesus actually say about our finance? What does Jesus actually say about our money? We're going to be looking at all these sorts of questions over the next few weeks. But as we start, I want to read to you from John chapter 14, and we're going to read from verse 6. I'm reading from the New Living Translation, and uh, we're going to start to unpack this series with this. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. Let's just pull apart this statement that Jesus made for a moment because he's making this incredibly exclusive claim. He's saying, well, people, I am the only way to God. That's a huge claim to make. You know, um, Buddha never made that claim. Uh, the, the authors of the Hindu texts never made that claim. But Jesus says, I am the only way to God. That's huge. That's huge. But before he says that, he says three things. And we'll, we'll actually read them in reverse order. He says, I am the life. Okay? We, we love the idea, don't we, that Jesus is the key to eternal life. We love the idea that there is a room reserved for us in heaven where, and a forever home that God has got for us that we can go to one day. I, I don't know about you, but I am super stoked by that idea. That is, a, that is something we love. He says, I am the truth. And we're pretty good at embracing that idea too, this, this idea that you know, if, if we can get our theology right, if we can think the right thoughts, if we can uh, understand the right truths about God, if we can get our theology squared away, that, that's a big part of following Jesus, isn't it? Getting, getting that right, yeah? Yeah. But then he says, I am the way. I am the way to live. What Jesus is saying is, take on a lifestyle like mine. Make my values your values. He's saying, live your life the way that I live my life. That's what he's saying in that I am the way. That one we struggle with. That one we struggle with because it's incredibly challenging, I reckon, to live in a way like Jesus did in this world. It's incredibly challenging. We live in a modern, western, postmodern, information-saturated world. How are we supposed to live like this Jewish rabbi over 2,000 years ago in occupied Palestine? How are we supposed to do that? But that's the call, to live our lives like Jesus did, to take on his rhythms of life, to change our lifestyles to be like his. That's part of the call. As much as the truth, as much as the life, Jesus tells us that he is the way, the way. So today as we kick off this new series, 
we're actually going to deal with two of the three most taboo topics in society. What do they tell you when you go out in public never to talk about? You never talk about sex, although that's changing in this, in this world. Never talk about religion and never talk about finance. Those are the three. Politics, I don't know about you, politics is fair game now. Everyone's got a position on politics and they all, we're, they all trot them out at the drop of a hat. I've noticed that. So we're actually going to be talking about two of the three. We're going to be talking about money and religion. Sorry, guys, I'm not talking about sex today. But we're talking about money and religion. And to be clear as we start, the values and principles that we're talking about today, none of the things we talk about are things that our family doesn't do. Okay? When I will never tell you to do something like that that I actually haven't taken on board myself and that I haven't, we don't have a lived experience of, you know. Uh, so let's move away from this sense of the prosperity preacher in the shiny, flashy suit who's trying to squeeze money out of people. That's not where we are. What we're actually doing today is I want to tell you what Jesus' perspective is on money and possessions and we have worked this out in our own family so we know that it works, okay? Okay? So as we start, I just want to say, who sets the values for you about finances in your life? Who sets them? I, I saw someone at the back there point to their wife. <laughs> um, does God set those values about finance and money or... Does the culture around you set them? Because one or the other is going to influence that. It's either going to be God or it's going to be the world that influences your values about money and finance. And I just want to show you, and this is a teaching I've brought before, but I actually think this is so important that we're going to recycle it again a couple of years later because once we get a revelation of this stuff, once we, we allow this to bed down in ourselves, it changes everything. It changes everything about money and finance. Here on the, on the whiteboard, you're going to, or the whiteboard, the, the screen, you're going to see here's the, the world's order, the wor world's priorities for your money. Here's how the world wants you to deal with your money in this order. So the first thing the world wants you to do is to enjoy your money. Then they actually want you to earn it, then save it, then give it. Okay? This is how the world wants you to treat your finance and possessions. This is the messages that you will constantly get. And I want to tell you, this order is all messed up. Okay, it's all messed up. And I'll explain why. I'll explain why. The world wants you to enjoy your money first. Think about the amount of junk mail you get through your letterbox each week. Think about the amount of junk mail you get through your, your letterbox. Think about the amount of spam emails you get in your inbox trying to sell you something. Anything, doesn't matter what it is. We get these volumes of junk mail, we get these volumes of spam. Think about when you're scrolling through Facebook, the number of retail ads that come up on your feed just all the time, all the time. They're always there. All those ads, I can guarantee you that there is never an ad that says, see our product? Just have a think about it for six months. Don't buy it, but it's a really good product, but just think about it and go and put this in your budget. And when you've got enough money, come back and see us and we'll still be here and you can buy the product then. Have you ever seen an ad like that? No. What do the ads always say? They say, buy it now. Get it now. You've got to have it now. If you can't afford it, interest-free. That's what all the ads say. If you don't get it now, you are missing out. You see, yep, end of financial year. That's why we're bringing this series. <laughs> the world wants you to rack up everything on the credit card, rack up everything on afterpay, uh, get yourself into debt. Did you know, I was reading about this, the late fees for afterpay, if you miss a payment, they can be as much as 25% of your purchase price. Wow. Wow. And some people are happy to pay that because they think it's only a minuscule amount of money. It all adds up. See, the world's perspective is spend heaps, earn a bit, save a little, and then if you're lucky, give away a little bit at the end. That's, that's the values of the world around your money and your possessions. 
See how messed up that is? Now, there's a completely different set of values for how God wants us to treat our finances. So we're going to look now at the way, the living of Jesus. What are God's priorities for our money? So let's have a look. We're going to look at them. We're going to break them down in order of priority. So here's the first one. Here's the first one. First thing God wants us to do is to earn our money. He wants us to earn it. You see, often people have these grand schemes. They want to make money without earning it. That's why so many people line up at the news agency for cross lotto tickets. That's why so many people, pokies, just get a hook into them and they can't shake it. Or you hear people having these amazing ideas. Hey, have you heard about the hot tip on Bitcoin? You hear about this kind of stuff. You know, it's, it's, or, you know, there's a property deal. I'm not supposed to tell you about it, but if you jump on board with this, it's going to be amazing. There's all these get-rich-quick schemes, you know. It's all fantasy. It's all putting your hopes and dreams in this lucky break. But I want to tell you this morning, God is not the God of the lucky break. God is not the God of chance. God is a loving provider. God is constant. The Word tells us He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And the first thing God actually wants you to do with your money is to earn it. Earn it honestly. Earn it. He's not into lucky breaks. He's into earning our money. Look at what Paul says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. He says, Even while we were with you, we gave you this command. Those unwilling to work will not get to eat. Wow. That's a bit of a kick in the guts for those of us who think we're lefties, isn't it? Yet we hear that some of you are living idle lives, refusing to work and meddling in other people's business. We command such people and urge them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Settle down and work to earn their living. Pretty clear, isn't it? God wants us to earn our living. He wants us to earn. I want to say we are incredibly blessed to live in this country with one of the best social welfare systems in the world. Oh, gosh, I feel so amazed that we get to live here. We get to benefit from Medicare. We get to benefit from Centrelink. We get to benefit from all of these incredible gifts. But unfortunately, there are some people who have used Centrelink as a crutch to avoid looking for work. Unfortunately, some people believe that they have the right to live their entire lives on social welfare. And if you're on a DSP or something, I fully get that. And I, I appreciate that you have to do that. But there are some people who actually go out looking, how can I live my whole life without working and just receive from others? I want to tell you, that's not God's will. That is not God's will. God wants us to work. He wants us to be useful in this society. He wants us to earn the money that we need to live. And if, if you're on a, um, a, an aged care pension or if you're on a DSP, by all means, take that. But find something useful to do where you add value to society in that. In that. Now, I understand that it can be hard to find work. I understand that we live in an awful age at the moment where you know, it is just really, really hard to find work. But I actually believe, because of this scripture, you know, Paul wouldn't say, make yourself useful and, and work to get what you eat, unless there was a job there for you. You know, it, God doesn't set us up to fail. So I want to ask right now, is there anybody in this room who is in need of work? Because what I want to do, if you're in need of work right now, I'd like you to stand to your feet and we're going to pray miraculous provision on you in Jesus' name. If there's anyone in the, live, in the overflow rooms, please stand to your feet if you need work. And we're going to pray miraculous. Is there anyone here who needs work, who needs a job? Um, no? Nobody? No? Wow. Okay, well, we're going to pray then for the people. God bless all you employed people. That is fabulous. Let's, 
Let's pray then for the people on the live stream because let's believe together that, that God is going to break through. God is going to do a work in people. Lord, we want to thank you right now that you promise uh, that we will be useful in this society. We will be able to earn the money that we need to work. And so we ask now, God, in your name that you will provide miraculous jobs for those who need them, God, in your name. We ask, Lord, that you will provide miraculous provision. And, and even, Lord, for those who are on Centrelink benefits and know they don't want to be, they actually want to get out and work, we pray now for divine health. We, we pray, for, pray for, um, for the right opportunities to come up at just the right time. And we ask too, God, that uh, for those who, who know that their working days are over, that you will continue to place tasks in front of them so that they can continue to, to bless society. They can continue to live well. They can continue to uh, be useful. And we ask for that now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay. So the first thing God wants us to do is to earn our money. Here's the second thing he wants us to do. He wants us to give. He wants us to give our money. You see, God wants us to give back to him. Let's have the next slide. God wants us to give back to him out of what we earn. And it's the first thing we do after we earn the money that God gives us. Look at what it says there in Malachi chapter 3. This is Old Testament, but we're going to talk later in this series about how giving to God actually isn't an Old Testament law. It even transcends that. So that's going to take up a whole message itself. Be ready for that. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse so there'll be enough food in my temple. If you do says the Lord of heaven's armies. I will open the windows of heaven to you. I'll pour out a blessing so great that you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test. Do you know that this is the only place in the whole Bible where God says to test him? Only place. There are even other parts in the Bible that say, where God says, don't put me to the test. But in tithes and offerings, in giving to God, he says, test him. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? And I, I reckon God says this because he knows how strong a hold money can have over us. I bet there are even people in this room who are feeling uneasy because we're, we're even broaching the topic of money and possessions today. That's because money can have a stranglehold over us. It can have a, have a, a thing over us. But God wants us to be like him. He wants us to be generous. He wants us to acknowledge that he's actually the one who's, who's given us everything. And by giving back to him in offering, what we're doing is we're putting him first in our lives. Now, when, as I said, when we give back to God, people sometimes call this tithes and offerings. And some people say, you know, the tithe is the first 10% of what you earn. I reckon that's a great starting point. My, my personal view is that we should, uh, we should actually move beyond that. Can we have some quiet back there, please? <laughs> Somebody's phone's going off. I love it. Uh, it's because I ask you to turn your phone on, don't I, to look at, look at your, uh, your Bible, and then it starts to play. How good is that? I wish it wasn't ACDC, though, Ina. That would be good. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, some people say that the tide's the first 10%. Of our, um, of our income. I reckon that's a great starting point. You know, that's a great entry level into giving back to God. Um, but I want to tell you the generosity of God knows no bounds. You know, and we've actually played around with this and that, that old cliche about I can't outgive God, it seems to be true. The more we give to Him, the more we give stuff away, the more He just seems to pour His blessing out on us. We'll talk more about offerings and generosity in the weeks to come, but that's the second priority. God wants us to earn our money. He wants us to give it. Here's the third. He wants us to save it. He wants us to save it. The Bible tells us that it's actually a mark of wisdom to save for the future. In Proverbs chapter 6, I've got the New Living here, but there's actually a better translation. It says, Take lesson from the ants, you lazy bones. Learn from their ways and become wise. Some of the older translations say, take a lesson from the ant, you sluggard. 
turn to the person next to them and call them a sluggard. <laughs> Love it. Take a lesson from the ants, you lazy bones. Learn from their ways and become wise. Though they have no prince or governor or ruler to make them work, they labor hard all summer, gathering food for the winter. This is amazing, isn't it? I mean, by instinct, something with an ant-sized brain knows that it needs to save. It knows it needs to put things away for a rainy day, for a cold day. Surely we can do that if our brains are so much bigger than that. One of the main reasons that we struggle to save, though, isn't because of the size of our brains. It's because of the state of our hearts. Comparison is a killer when it comes to saving. We look around and we see what other people have and we think, gosh, I want that too. And then we actually try and go after it. We try and get it. We scheme and we plan and we, we throw ourselves into debt to have that thing. You know, often the person with the nicest car, the person with the biggest house, they're the person with the biggest debt. Most of those beautiful cars you see driving around, they don't own them. They're owned by the bank. And the people are, are renting them off the bank with these exorbitant personal interest rate loans. So really what we have to do is we have to plan our spending. No matter how you are in this, how old you are in this room, whether you're a young person, whether you're an adult, whether you're retired, every person and every family needs a budget that works for them. You've got to have one. You've got to have one. Because to start saving, you need to actually be able to keep track of what you spend. Some people are going, oh, budget, I don't know how to do that. No one's ever taught me how to do that. My parents never talked about this kind of stuff. Well, if you need to know how to create budgets, if you need to know how to actually keep track of your saving, so you can, your spending, so you can start to save, please come and talk with myself or Joella or Brian or Chris. There's a whole heap of people in this room who can actually help you to figure that out. We can help you learn how to budget, how to save, and how to spend so that you can actually have this financial freedom so you're not constantly racking stuff up on your credit card. At various times through the year, and we'll be running it again soon, I imagine, um, Brian and Michael run a, a course called the CAP course, the Christians Against Poverty Financial Management course. It's all about learning to, to create budgets and how to create margin in your life financially. It is a great course. And if you are someone who is constantly scratching, that is one of the best things that you can possibly do to give you financial freedom. In this world, in Australia right now, none of us ha should be worried about financial difficulties. We can all live well. We can all live well. And here's the fourth one. God wants us finally to enjoy the money that he's given us, to enjoy the resource that he's given us. Some of you are going, how can I enjoy what God's given me? You've already told me to give it away and to save it. When am I supposed to do this enjoying? What are you giving me? There's chicken feed here. The key is in what Paul says in Philippians chapter 4 from verse 12. He says, I know how to live on almost nothing and with everything. I've learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it's with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little. For I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. We love to quote the last part of that passage, don't we? I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength because I am a superman. It's actually about living with not much. <laughs> it's actually about finance and possession. What Paul is doing here is he's spelling out what's called the principle of contentment. Contentment is the ability to enjoy what you have, no matter what you have. Because sometimes what we don't have keeps us from enjoying what we do have. Here in Australia, we own more things than most people do in the world. And we're so busy shopping for more and more that we actually don't have time to enjoy the things we've already got. TV shows like The Block or Escape to the Country, they, they make us dissatisfied with the home that we have. Instagram, as we scroll through it, it breeds dissatisfaction with our bodies, with our hair, with our clothes. 
Cooking shows make us dissatisfied with the food we eat. Suddenly, good nourishing food isn't enough. It's got to look like something that's presented in a restaurant. All of these things are designed to breed dissatisfaction. So we end up renovating perfectly good homes. We end up landscaping our backyards. We, we get hair extensions. We, we try and get the perfect on fleek eyebrows. You, we work on our abdominal muscles. We try and find the perfect pair of shoes or, or the perfect piercing or the perfect tattoo. Anything to make us look like we're something better. But you know, we just can't enjoy it, can we? Because we're busy getting more and more and more and more. Think about retail therapy. Who loves to go shopping for stuff? None of you are going to admit it now. <laughs> but we love to go shopping for stuff. And when you find the perfect bargain or you find just the right thing, you have that immediate sense of satisfaction, that immediate sense of rush. How long does that last? About 25 minutes, that's exactly right. And then suddenly you're on the hunt for the next thing. When the package comes in the post, there's this immediate sense of excitement. What am I going to be opening here? And you either get disappointed because it's from China and it's about 15 sizes too small, or if it's just right, by the next day you're already looking for the next thing. Too much is never enough. Too much is never enough. Many people are so busy making a living that they actually don't have time to make a life. We actually need to ask God to train us to be content with what we have because we've already got more than most people in the world. I'm going to ask the band to come now. And as we wrap this up, I just want to remind you again, the world's order, it's all messed up. The world says, enjoy first, then earn, then save, then give. The world wants you to rack up everything on your credit card, spend heaps, earn a bit, save a little, and if you're lucky and you've got a little bit at the end, give it away. But God says to prioritize our money in this order. He says, earn what you have. Give it away. To him, give it away in generosity. Put some aside and then enjoy what you've got left. I want to say, if you're feeling pressured about your finances, if, if you're feeling like you don't have enough from fortnight to fortnight to make things last, if you're finding that there's arguments in your family all the time about the bills and about how you spend the money, or if you find that you're spending it all, you're just spending it all and you're not saving a cent, these are actually all symptoms of a much deeper spiritual issue. Money, possessions and finances are an incredibly spiritual thing. And the issue is one of trust. Am I trusting God with my finances? That's the issue. Or am I being completely confused and smashed about by the enemy of this world? Because whatever we trust for our security is our God. So if you're worried about provision, actually your money and your finances are your God. For those who put money and possessions in the right place, you know, you know that your possessions aren't your future. Our future is in Christ. So the big issue is when, you, when it comes to money, are you going to trust God? Are you going to trust God and do it in His way? Will you stand with me? I want to pray with you this morning. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for courage and determination to live in the way of Jesus. He's not just the truth and the life. He's the way. And when it comes to money and finances, His way is pretty clear. His priorities are pretty clear. I want to pray for those of you who are under financial stress right now. No matter what the cause, I know financial stress has often come for things that are not our own doing, and who knows that COVID has done a whole heap of that. But some of our financial stresses are our, our own doing, whether it's because we struggle with addictions, whether it's we struggle with um, obsessive shopping, whether it, whatever it is, living in a lifestyle that we can't sustain. 
I also want to pray for you for courage. For those people who need to know they need to rework their priorities, who know that their priorities have been set by the world around this stuff. And for some of you, I want to pray for the freedom that comes as you learn to give, as you learn to be generous. Let's pray. Lord God, as we stand before you, we're aware that we're entering into taboo ground, as it were, in our culture. We don't talk about money, but we're talking about money. And Lord, together we just acknowledge that any sense of discomfort we have, any sense of uncomfortableness we have, what that actually is about, God, it, it's actually showing that, that money is a spiritual issue and it's one that can have a very firm hold on us. It's, it's one that can have a stranglehold on us. So Lord, I, I pray for my brothers and sisters in Christ right now. Those in this room, those in the overflow room, those on the live stream. And I pray, God, that when it comes to this issue, I pray for courage and determination, God, to live in your way, Jesus. Uh, Lord, that people will not be swayed by the world. People will not be pulled around by the world and pushed around by the world and told, this is how you should do it. That's how you should do it. You need all of this right now. But the people will choose to live as Jesus did. People will choose to earn. People will choose to then give out of their first earnings. People will choose to be wise and save. And people will choose to, to enjoy the money that they have, to enjoy the possessions that they have, to be content with what they have. And Lord, I also pray for those who who desperately need to learn to save, those who know they live from pay to pay, who need to learn some self-control, who, who need to learn to be content with what they've got. Lord Jesus, pray now that you would speak to them, God, that you would move in them, that you would help them to realise that actually this shopping thing, it's an addiction. This online shopping thing, this, this constant looking for the next thing that gives me that quick dopamine rush for 25 minutes as I open the box, that needs to go because that's my security. And I want my security to be in Christ. So Lord, I, I pray for my friends right now. And I pray, God, that as we move through this series, you'll tear down some strongholds. As we move through this series, God, you'll, you'll reshape some values. You'll reshape some culture. Because we're not of this world. We're sons and daughters of the King of Kings. And I pray, God, we will walk in the way of Jesus when it comes to finance. In your name. Amen. We're going to sing Christ is enough because who knows? Our money is not enough. Our possessions are not enough. None of that we get to take with us when we finally shuffle off this mortal coil. Christ is enough. And I just really sense too that if, if you need a breakthrough in the area of finance this morning, um, come and talk to me afterwards and I want to pray with you because I really sense that God can do something this morning in that area. So let's, but let's worship Him now. Let's worship Him.
want to praise you and thank you that you give us everything we need. And Lord, that when we decide to follow you, when we decide to put our feet on that course of following you to the life, following you by the truth and following you in the way that you go, then Lord God, you just pour out enough that you make you enough for us. And Lord, we just love you and thank you and say thank you so much for that. for a minute shall we that song is uh, that's my uh, you might not know but that was three years ago we learnt that song Nelly um, and became the song of the moment about three years ago and it's, it's, a, it's a real anthem for me personally so I'm here to sort of say goodbye to you all but just remind you about a few really cool things going on in the church um, but I, I don't know about your week and I'm, I feel a bit like I need to say this but I've had a week where I've had people come to me and they're been telling me really sad, sad things, really broken things where they're going on with them. Um, and uh, 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 part, part of me is like, oh, gee, my life is great right now. Like, you know, when you hear these things, these people are going through. But um, and <laughs> how much do we make it about us, right? So I'm sitting there hearing these sad, sad things. And, and this person, oh, for hours, we're just sitting there and and she finally tells me that she's going to get the cards out, the angel cards out, and they're going to tell her and reassure her. And, and I'm just, you know, but it wasn't until this morning that I came to church and I was like, oh, 
you should come to Alpha. So, <laughs> so I just remind you to get your head out of your own butt and actually look about, look at your circumstances and think about um, what God wants you to be doing them in them. And so we have Alpha coming up and it's coming up the 25th of July. And she's like, yeah, that's actually exactly what I want. So um, think about what who you're interacting with and who you're talking with and what opportunity you can provide to someone to come along to Alpha. So Alpha's going to be on the uh, 25th of July. Our family loves Alpha. He, Harry got so excited when he heard Alpha was on again. He's like, oh, that's so cool. I love Alpha. So come uh, invite people along. If my 15-year-old grumpy, moody teenage child loves Alpha, then I guarantee whoever you're thinking of inviting will enjoy Alpha, okay? That's all the promo you need for that. Um, so then we have um, Soak is on. You've got to follow me here. Sorry, I'm jumping all over the place. Soak is back on Wednesday night, 7.30, here at the church. Come and be a part of some time where you just actually perhaps turn up, make an appointment with God and say, God, what did I miss? <laughs> when was I thinking about me and not thinking about what you want? So come along and spend that time. I was just saying to Chris this morning, I sat down and did my Bible reading and I'm like, so when you sit down and spend that time with God, he shows you the things you're missing. So come, make that appointment with him, hang out with him and find out what he's asking you to do. We also have, now I'm very excited about this NADOC week. Wow, that's next Sunday here after church at uh, 1.30. We've got a NADOC celebration, Healing Country. Oh my goodness, such healing is needed in this space. I just encourage you to come and ask God to do stuff. This is stuff is the stuff only God can heal, right? He can, I never forget a preacher, I've forgotten her name, but she preached on turning what only God can turn. And I, I really have a heart for the, the First Nations of this country and I have a heart that they will be healed and that they would, their country would be healed and that reconciliation will be real. Reconciliation will be real for everyone and that forgiveness will be real and every all the blessings that come with that. So be a part of that. Come and repent. Come and repent. We all need to repent. We all play part in this. So yeah, let's do that. Right. So before we leave, we got, um, please spend some time on, in your phone or in the box at the back corner giving your tithes and offerings. Again, I can only reiterate what Dave's just said. We had a situation where we didn't have a major family member, a car. <laughs> a car just, just disappeared off our life and then sure enough, God gave the means, bang, at exactly the right time, at exactly the right place. Uh, and covered that cost for us so god is amazing god will provide hands down absolutely I, i've got testimony after testimony after testimony after testimony and that's this just this year okay so um i've tested god in this do it you just be dumb if you don't you'll miss out that's all i can say so do it all right and then get coffee because that's yummy and tea if you like drinking dirty water all right see ya bye